the most popular roads. That's around the middle lake. That's 26 kilometers. That takes you to Muckers Abbey, Dinah's Cottage, Torque Waterfall, Muckers House, come back into town. Then you go down to Ross Castle and the Copper Mines. Okay? It takes you right down to the lake shore. It's very scenic, very scenic. That's the most popular road now and easy. As I say, 26 kilometers. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, and thanks for listening to the Midlife Traveler, where we are exploring Ireland through the voices, opinions, and stories of locals who live there or travelers who've been there. I am Laura, and today we are in Ireland exploring bike riding in Killarney National Park, and you are going to hear from locals Colm and Jack. So first, I did have the opportunity to do a very brief bike ride in Killarney National Park for just a couple of hours and get a taste of it. And it was really a relaxing way to spend the day. The bike paths are flat. They're they're easy. It's not a strenuous ride. It's just a nice way to get out and be in nature, see some beautiful sights. And when I came back to O'Sullivan's, I asked Colm to kind of map out the route that I had gone on because there are lots of different trails and paths and choices that you can take once you're in Killarney National Park. And I was following a guide, so I wasn't really sure exactly where I was at in perspective to the park. So what you're going to hear is Colm as he shares with me the more popular routes in Killarney National Park. And as he was speaking, he was highlighting on a map the actual routes that he was talking about. So if you go to our website at midlifetraveler.com, there are pictures of those maps so you can actually see the most popular routes to bike in Killarney National Park. With that, I'm going to turn this over so you can hear Colm talk about routes in Killarney National Park, and then you'll get a little taste of the tour with Jack later at the end. Okay, so first of all, what's the name of the bike shop? O'Sullivan's, and we, uh, and we have three bike rental shops in town. So we're covering the three corners of the town, okay? We have one here on Beach Road, one on the Muckers Road, and one on College Street. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. So we are the one on... On Beach Road. On Beach Road. Beach Road as in, as in the wood, not... There's no beach. The beach is miles away. Nice. <laughs> okay, all right. So the tour we just did went in through... Oh, you went to Knock Rear. You went around here. Yes, yeah, so okay. you went through yeah. a golf course, yeah. and then we came oh, around you, back, and then we went over to you, Ross Castle. We went all through... It's known as the Fuss Away. It yes. takes you all the way to Fossa, yes. off the main road, Correct. off the main road, yeah. You're running, you're going parallel to the N72, okay. He took you as far as the golf course and brought you back, yeah. But then yeah. we came back through, we went over to Ross Castle. Ross Castle, you went down here, right? It was all this area anyway, it's not as knock rear anyway. Knock rear, okay. There are a lot of animals. Yeah. And noisy ones. Yeah, they're rotting this time of year. They're rotting, they're in heat, as they say. You can watch for a while, but... Don't hang around. They get very aggressive this time. <laughs> okay. So it's red deer and seeky deer is what you would have seen. Yes. The red deer are, are uh, uh, natural to the national park, but the seeker are from Asia. They would oh. have been brought here maybe over a hundred years ago. Okay. Uh, will I show you the the most popular roads? Yes. Yeah. And you can take them away with you. Okay. The most popular roads. That's around the middle lake. That's 26 kilometers. That takes you to Muckers Abbey, Dinah's Cottage, Torque Waterfall, Muckers House, come back into town, then you go down to Ross Castle and the Copper Mines, okay? The Copper Mines? The Copper Mines, it's just, in, there was a copper mine there hundred, hundreds of years ago. Oh. Yeah, they would have uh, exported copper to all over Europe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But it, it takes you right down to the lake shore, it's very scenic, very scenic. That's the most popular road now, and easy. As I say, 26 kilometers. And then the Gap of Dunlow for the more adventurous cyclists. That's 56 kilometers. So, the way Jack brought you today through the National Park, 
come out of Fosse, turn left after Fosse, left again for Cape Carnies, through the gap of Dunlow, and back in by Muckers. Then, here, that's 46 kilometres. And then, there's an option getting the boat, going all the way through the three lakes to Lord Brendan's. Oh, and I saw that, the boats there, I didn't know yeah, where they go, okay. That'll have the, the, the gap of Dunlow trip, so it'll have it to 23. All you do is cycle down to Ross Castle, get the boat, the boats leave at 10, uh, 10, 30 and 11. You just put your bike yeah. on the boat? On the boat, yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So that there's various companies do, do that. We deal with a company called Gapid on Low Tools or Commerce. They have an office locally here in town. Okay. Yeah. Great. Take that with you anyway. That's Thank you so much yeah, for your time. Okay. All Can right. I get your I'm name? Great... Colum. Colum. I'm Laura. Laura, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Glad you had a great day anyway. Take that with I'm you. I'm going to give a bike map of the whole area? Yeah. Perfect. I'll take a picture of that and send it. No, I'll take it away with you. Take it away with you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So now that you've heard from Colum about some of the most popular routes people take into Killarney National Park, next you're going to get a little taste of what it's like being inside on a tour. And you're going to have to kind of use your imagination because this is something that's probably better shown and demonstrated through videos and photos. But what you're going to hear is Jack, who is our local Irish tour helpful person that rode with us that day through the park and what he was describing is what we were seeing where we stopped on the path to chat and the path that we were on to one side to the right was a lake and there was a fisherman in a boat out fishing and off in the distance was Inish Fallen. Right behind us was lush greenery on the left side of the path and a big limestone kiln. And in front of us, where the path was continuing around a corner, we could peek off in the distance and see Ross Castle beyond the trees. So you're going to hear Jack talking about, uh, mostly about the limestone kiln, because someone had asked him about that. But there's a real sense of place in almost every corner that you stop at when you're on these paths in Clarny National Park. So... I really hope you have the opportunity to experience this for yourself one day. So here's Jack talking about that one quick pit stop. It was an old seat of learning in the 6th, 7th century uh, Christian uh, setting. Many of the, the princes of Europe were educated there, uh, as we're told by the annals of Inish Fallon, uh, documented from the 9th century. Uh, this here is a lime kiln. That's how we used to fertilize our land. They used to burn limestone rock into powder form because if you look around and you can see all our rock bed here is limestone since the last great ice age. And they used to burn it and spread it on the land to fertilize it for growing crops and feeding cattle. So that's why you see them dotted all over the country, those buildings. They had to be a very solid, strong construction to take the intense heat of the burning. To, to burn the stone. You can see the, the face, the rock face. It's all limestone. It burns down into quality lime <coughs> with a lot of nutrients in it. Do you know? And so that's why we see those buildings there. Uh -huh. I mean, that was probably built in about 1780s. And you see, do you see, do you see how it's still standing today? I was talking earlier about the, the pride they took in, in a stone that they cut. Very impressive. And they're quite common around. And if you look out there, you can see Inish Fallon there. You can see one of the monasteries there, one of the churches. Uh, that, yeah, if you come over closer here, you can see. Come or come over this way a bit, and you can see, you can see the church there, look. And you see the church straight out there. And someone's fishing. And someone fishing, yeah, yeah, nice and tidy. I you're, you're 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 restricted now to two salmon, two salmon a season. But you're who's to say again? Who's to say he didn't catch five this season? No one can say it. A salmon, a good salmon, is worth 80, 90 euros today because you can't get fresh fish. You can't get fresh salmon world over. It's all farmed. Right. You ever eat it? The farm salmon is full of fat. and it's hard, it's, you, ever, you eat a fresh farm salmon or a fresh salmon out of there, you know you've eaten something. So what we're peeking out ahead is Ross Castle, I'm thinking. I'm peeking out ahead is Ross Castle over, that's right, yeah. Uh, 15th century, 1482. Okay around that 1452 I think. So now you've learned a bit about 
renting bicycles and riding bikes and routes through Killarney National Park. If you are interested in having this be part of your Killarney vacation, I definitely recommend stopping at an O'Sullivan's to talk to them about your bike routes, rent your bike equipment. And there's also a really cool Killarney National Park bike route map that they have available there. I have snapshots of the map on the website so you can look at it and see what you're looking for, but I don't have the complete map on there because it's something that you're probably better off purchasing once you're on site in Killarney, but it really goes through and shows where in Killarney National Park you can see a variety of things. Where you can see castle ruins, where you can see standing stones, where you can see castles, where you can see stone beehive huts. All of these cool things are marked out on this bike ride map and uh, it's just a really, really cool way to experience Killarney National Park, I think. So that's it for today's episode. I hope when you're planning your next Ireland vacation, you consider Killarney and exploring the national park on a bike. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you listening and uh, safe travels wherever you may roam.